Wanna move my feet Wanna drop my one Wanna move my feet Wanna drop my one Wanna move my feet Wanna drop my one Wanna move my feet Welcome to another Airquake Whiskey Steady, and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Combus Box No Name. One of the things I found interesting about this whiskey is I did an uncorking of it, and usually a heavily painted whiskey, you know, they require a little bit of patience. You don't want to judge them by a neck pour. You want to get them down below the shoulder before they start to really open up and show their character. This one, straight off the neck, was really, really, really good. It just really, really shine. The fruit was really coming through. Uh, another thing I liked about it is it has uh, a, new, a wax top on it. I don't like wax tops, but it peeled off nice, neat, and clean. But before getting into this whiskey, here are my notes. Compass Box No Name Blended Scotch Whiskey, released in the fall of 2017. This is a limited edition bottling from Compass Box, which they call their PDS whiskey yet. If you're an Isla lover, this one is for you. 75.5% of volume is from a well-known distillery located on Pier Road. In other words, Art Beg, aged in recharred American standard barrels, 10 0.6% is produced near the village of Port Askeg, that would be Kalila. Aged in refill American standard barrels, 13.4% is from a much loved distillery in the Northern Highlands village of Brora, that would be Klein Leash. Aged in recharred hogshead, and 0.5% is a Highland malt blend, uh, which is undisclosed, aged in a heavily toasted. French hybrid cask. It is non-chill filtered and no color has been added. It is bottled at 48.9% alcohol by volume and prices range uh, anywhere between $129 to $199 here in the US. So really, really enjoying this one. I, uh, I liked it neat. I liked it on ice. I liked it with a little bit of water. It didn't really seem to change it a whole lot, um, adding a little bit of water or ice to it. Uh, it didn't diminish the uh, smoke uh, or fruit character to it. Um, as you saw there in the notes, it's got some Ardbeg, it's got some Klein Leash, it's got some Kalila. It, though, screams Ardbeg off the nose. Absolutely unmistaken, however, while I get smoke, it's really well integrated. I get a lot of chocolate. I get some uh, lemon, lime, some real nice spice, some vanilla, but I don't get creosote. I don't get tar. I don't get those uh, sort of more aggressive PD smoky notes. It's much more of an integrated uh, smoked chocolate or dark chocolate. I do get a little bit of a brininess and a little bit of saltiness, as you might expect, uh, you know, having so much influence from Isla. On the palate. Mmm. Mmm. Love the texture of this whiskey. It's silky. It's glossy. You might call it creamy or oily or silky. Really glides along the palate. Has real nice development. Yeah, it has a very, very, very intense um, smokiness to it. This is the smokiest of everything from uh, Compass Box. Unmistakably, Isla. In the middle, the fruit sh shones through, shines through. Get a little bit of a lime. Lemon, another citrus. I think what they've done really, really well is take something that is intensely peated, Ardbeg, use another whiskey that is tends to be Kalila, you, you're talking moderately peated, so you're backing off the peat a little bit, and then introducing some uh, Highland fruit notes um, and sweetness to the whiskey. And so you're really 
sort of dialing in and tuning in uh, the smoke character to it and bringing up uh, the fruit character to it. And it has a really nice long finish. I'm still tasting it now. Hmm. Hmm. This one was going for $140 at a local shop. And then it went on sale, came down to $129, 99 or 130 and that's when I bought it. However, looking online, I've been seeing as high as $200. This is an absolutely fantastic whiskey. What am I gonna give in terms of a score? I'm gonna go 92 points. I really, really like this. Now, I'm a big Ardbeg fan. Got a whole bunch of them right up here over my, over my shoulder. Um, how would this rate, if I were doing a blind against my friends up here, uh, the Ardbeg? Um, I'm probably gonna put it along the lines of Oogadol, not quite Cory Vrecken. Another whiskey that might be somewhat comparable in terms of the interlayers of smoke and peat uh, and, and the fruit character to it. It's it's even though the the peatness of it, the smokiness of it is different than an Octomore, and yet sort of the way it's layered uh, and the degree of, of it reminds me of, of an Octomore, but with a dis very distinctive. Art bag uh, character to it. Really, really, really like this. This is absolutely fantastic. Um, if you are a peat head, uh, if you're really into smoky uh, whiskeys and you can get this for, you know, 130 bucks, I would definitely pick one up. $200? No, I'm not going to go there. I can get the Octomore 8.1 for like 150. Uh, and I don't think this is quite where Octomore 8.1 is. But for 130, I would say definitely I, I would grab it. Absolutely a fantastic whiskey. All right, that's it for uh, this review. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. Share with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and other social networking channels. Until next time, cheers. Hey, if you like my review, be sure to check out these other whiskey videos.